Okay, this is the um, setup for still life. Now, I've put some canvas I had lying around, um, but uh, as a backdrop. But if you have um, any a sheet or a pillowcase or something like that, and then just tape it. I've got it uh, taped to the top of a computer monitor, and then down to the desk here. It's taped in the corners and so on. It'll probably fall down <laughs> in the middle, but um, yeah, secure that and. I guess that you probably have a tin of something lying around in the house. I've I've selected uh, beans and an egg, um, and I've put a lamp over to the left here. Oh, I'll show you. Here we are. That's the lamp, and it's showing the shadows. So basically, a lamp either side, sort of po pointing diagonally across. Um, I'm lucky enough that I've got light coming in from a window above in the studio, um, so it's direct, directly there. Um, but um, so, if you have a desk sort of near a window or whatever, but it's up to you. But it's just as long as you've got some sort of um, stronger light coming from a side and creating shadows, it gives us more dimensions to work with. Um, it's not going to be a masterpiece or anything like that. It's just basically. Um, a quick sketch to um, show how to lay things out and everything else and you know if you do um, like I do plenty of sketches and, and fill up your book and everything else when it comes to a painting and so on you have references you know to use to look back on and so on um, but you know if you're stuck at home and uh, haven't got anything else to do um, this is a nice way to pass the time so um, I'll keep it simple and um, see how you get on. Okay, the first thing to remember is this is just a sketch. Um, uh, what we need to do to start with, once you've actually um, tried to measure things with the pencil and then transfer them to the paper a couple of times on some spare paper, um, you can start by uh, drawing, measuring up the subject, e.g. the can, and then uh, basically draw an oblong on, on, on the page and then we, um, we mark out where the lid is um, and draw an oval-ish. It doesn't have to be exact right now. I mean most of sketching is about using your eyes, it's not about using a pencil, you know, to, it doesn't have to be exact but by doing it this way you um, get the scale right so in other words the size of the can compared to the size of the egg should be you know, pretty much there. I mean, it's not going to be scientifically accurate, but um, we don't want it to be. You want a sketch just to have some feel. Um, if you wanted to do a photographic sketch, which I've seen most a lot of people online do and so on, that you know they take um, a long time. You ha you have to put a lot lot of effort into it. This is about this will take about half an hour or so, and you'll come out with um, something. You know. You should be happy with, uh, you know, it's something for your portfolio or whatever. Anyway, from the drawing, you can see I've been marking out sort of points um, using the pencil as we, as I suggested, um, and you just keep doing that and referencing one object to the other and how far it is from, you know, the bottom of the the can and the angle to certain points on the egg. And so on. First of all, with the egg, with the egg you draw that by doing le uh, how, um, put your left marker in away from the can. So check how far the egg is, is um, with your pencil. Put that mark in. Then check how far away the egg is on the far side and put that mark in. Um, and then you look at the a line. So hold up, hold your pencil horizontally and look at the um, still live and see where the bottom of the egg intersects um, the can or it's not actually intersecting the can it's underneath it but that will show you how far away that is from the can and that's where you put your mark for the third mark and then the top mark of the egg um, you've got to find a, something on the can to reference say something on the label and then hold the uh, your pencil horizontally on the page and, and mark that out from there and then it is literally a matter of by eye to draw the curves in 
of the egg just see get as close as you can you can always I don't use a rubber when when I'm, I'm working I just put in marks and then redo them and da 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 and eventually I'll get it to such a stage that, that, that there's shadow and everything else and eventually we can use a rubber which I would I would say use a putty rubber that's the best thing to use it's um, most versatile and uh, doesn't mess up your paper uh, the uh, what else oh yeah basically after you've you've got it all um, set out um, try not to keep um, measuring in other words use your eyes um, as much as anything to tell you where things are and you, you'll sort of get used to the fact that you'll be referencing one part of the object to the other to make to see what size things are I mean you'll get them wrong obviously um, I did with like you can see I'm doing the label or I was there um, that is a bit finer detail than I, I even I thought it was so that had to be changed um, but that's the whole point about it with sketching you're literally making mistakes you know not not rubbing them out just um, drawing over them and eventually if it gets to the stage where you can't sort of see your new paper um, and uh, draw in the new bits uh, and just keep working away working away until you get it um, to uh, hmm, whatever you think is complete you know you can, f you can stop when you when you want uh, yeah, just working out where the points on the label are for um, lettering and so on. You got to remember, of course, that um, the can's curved, so your your letters are going to you know curve round with it. Uh, that's for the the ribbon bit on the can. Um, the can, uh, you, you just got to suggest those to start with. What I did was actually. Uh, drew them in early on, then I took them out again and redrew them to get them uh, correct. But it was just so I could see how the whole thing was sort of coming together. I, I like to do it quite rough to start with and, and then uh, redo bits as I go. Um, but actually, as you'll see from the finished um, sketch, I left it at a, you know, I think at a stage where there's still movement in it as far as you're leaving sort of light. Uh, in places that, where there wouldn't be light and so on. Um, everyone has their own style of drawing, of course. You might be a sort of the sort of person who wants to draw things uh, really sort of quite heavily, lines and so on, 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 and more direct, you know, even with a pen or something like that. But um, I like to do it very quickly and sort of use cross hatching to give an idea of where the shade uh, from the lamp is. In other words, I put it, put it in on the egg there roughly, and I'm doing it roughly on the can there. You see, that's where light comes from, your left-hand side. And, of course, you're going to get the shader on the right-hand side. There is actually light coming from above as well, but it's not that strong, so it's not really making too much difference to our sketch. Um, but that's, you've, that's what it's all about, really. It's about shades. And so what I'll try and do is I'll accentuate the dark, um, and then I'll uh, see how it's all balanced out with the mid-tone, like on the right-hand side of the, the can. Um, yeah, doing the egg here. I've left some uh, bits in the background track there, so you can you'll see. Um, which normally in my studio there is. Um, I mean, if you see my my golf work, you'll know that. Um, it's pretty finished, even though I've sort of loosened it up recently because I, I was getting I was getting a bit bored trying to make it sort of um, really tight and so on. And, uh, I think it gives a bit more feel the swing and so on. Um, but it's nothing like this. I mean, one of those paintings, the big ones that I do, it takes mm, you know anything up to two weeks. Um, and this is only a half an hour three quarters an hour, whatever. I'll have a look and see how long it took, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it's good for you to keep your eye in. I don't normally sit and sketch things like this because I'm using photographs from my reference photographs that I take when I'm on the course. Um, most of the time, unless I'm given one by a client to use. Um, 
Right, as you can see now, I've got to the stage where we've done, we're starting to do the darks on, on the egg there. We've put in a, a mid. Um, there's a dark cross sh shadow um, of the can. And um, yeah, we're going back on that now. Let's have a look. I can't remember how I did it actually now. Um, there's no way I can actually chat away when I'm when I'm sketching. It just that would just put me off completely. So I've had to do it, uh, add the uh, voiceover later. Yeah, very nice mark. Um, the funny looking um, circle on the egg, of course, is where the highlight is, so the, the the brightest point of the egg. Uh, we'll, what we'll, we'll um, use a putty rubber to rub that out and brighten up the, the that egg against the shadow of the can was really quite bright. Um, the other thing that was quite bright was the top of the can. So I think if I remember rightly, I left that mostly um, bare paper and just a couple of lines. Um, then opposed to that, we had the, the label with the, uh, the dark um, background bits on there. That sort of gives you a lot of difference in contrast and so on. Excuse me. Yeah, I tend to flit around it. I don't stay on one thing all the time. I'll something will catch my eye as I'm drawing. I'll move from one point to another. Of course, here back to the can and the beans and so on. Yeah. So now I think I'm going. Yep, yeah, going to start putting in the darker shadow of the bottom of the can, and trying to let's have a look. Yeah, sort of get some some sort of dimension to the bottom there. Oh yeah, yeah, putting in the darks on the outside. Self-explanatory. You can see me doing it. I mean that's basically my way of doing it all I mean all you've got to learn from this is how it's set out and how um, and, and how practice for you will make things the way you want them to be you just have to keep drawing and keep drawing but uh, um, yeah so uh, to sharpen the pencil I use a craft knife and I don't sharpen it to a real point I make it sort of um, what would you say sort of a flat top but um, yeah, sort of making the lead long. If you see what I mean? You can actually see it there. It's uh, it's not um, it's not as a pencil sharpener would do, but you can use pencil sharpener. It's okay. It's just um, I find that easier to use sometimes if you want to use it sort of side on uh, for shading and things like that. But uh, I'll show you how I do that in another video. Uh, tips and things video. That's that's probably a good idea actually. When it comes to things like the paintings and so on, there are all sorts of technical things that uh, you could probably do with before you start them. Um, uh, a word on that, the next um, tutorial, um, I'm going to do, well I was thinking, it was gonna, I said watercolour, but we'll see. I'm not sure if you've got watercolours or whatever. If you send me an email or a, t a tweet or something and let me know what materials you'd like me to use, and I'll... Um, average it up and go with it. Um, the third one will be uh, I'm actually doing a book at the moment um, using uh, my reference photos of, of various country scenes and so on. Um, and Kill Two Birds With One Stone, uh, the next one I do um, I'll try and film it and try and set the mic up so I can talk as I'm painting it. Um, it's a sort of learning process for me, all this um, tutorial thing. Um, but it might be interesting for you to see how I do it in... It'll be in acrylics, which is very different from oil sketching and painting. Um, because of you've got the drying time and, and so on. They tend to be a sharper image. So anyway, we'll, we'll get around to that when we get around to it. Uh, for now... Yeah, I've just done the... Uh, the can, if you look at it, has of course ridges that... Um, 
uh, and, a, and little the label has got all sorts of funny little marks and this and that. Now they just suggest them for now. You just put a little line in to suggest where it is. You'll be uh, darkening down that side of the can, and it will cover up a lot of it. Um, yeah, there we go. What I was talking about uh, putting the marks in on the top of the can. Uh, yeah. Um, but it was life drawing, I don't know, three or four times, days a week, you know. Uh, but my tutor was a, a brilliant draftsman, a, a sort of stickler for how you sketched the process of it. Um, all this, this, the way I was doing it with points, and you know, you go from one point to the other on the drawing to see how it. You know, he, he thought that it didn't matter what you actually ended up with as long as you showed all the points. He was happier to see points all over the drawing than to see actual lines connecting the points. It's Because it, it was all the process and the thought processes behind how one thing relates to the other and so on. And we used to, as I say, we used to do that four times a week, you know, you know, life models and so on. It was, um, and for a 16 year old, it was a total eye opener, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, but anyway, you're not starting with that. You've just got a, um, a can of beans and an egg. <laughs> yeah, I think it's sort of starting to take shape. I mean, most of, probably apart from the shadow and, and, and you know the highlights and so on. I mean, if I was just sort of sketching it just for a bit of fun, you know, in my in my sketchbook and so on, I'd finish there because it's just something to, you know, I've captured it. I've done what I, I want to do. You know, it's, it's a can. I don't want it photographic. If I want it photographic, I'll paint it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm fiddling now. I I don't like it when you start. F um, uh, like that. So, but um, and if I could do my paintings uh, of golfers like that, like I do with my sketches, um, I'd be happier. But the client wouldn't be. They, they um, unfortunately. The clients always want um, photographic-looking uh, paintings, and and if you send over a sketch, they'll tell you otherwise. So, um, but I try to make my paintings sort of loose as possible by showing the speed of the swing, or the, not even the speed of the swing, but the movement of the swing. And uh, yeah, there we go. We're doing the shadow now. Going mad. What's he doing? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. I'd probably do that different if I was doing it again. Anyway. Yeah, it's good for me as well. I can see what rubbish I'm doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, see what you're doing there. Okay. But there's no point doing it if you, if you don't enjoy doing it. I mean, I do it for a living. And believe me, sometimes I don't feel like painting. So what do I do? I leave it. Just I literally go to my music because that's my other passion, and do that. And I'm lucky to have two passions because then you can, you know, fight one off against the other. Um, and then once I get fed up with the music, I'll come back to the, the painting. You know. So you can.